I don't know how to intro this video, so we're just gonna jump into it, okay? Okay. Hello, everybody. Today's gonna be a little bit of a different video. We're gonna be covering an awesome entrepreneur by the name of Edwin Mervish. So when you hear the name Mervish, you might think of one of two things. Ed Mervish Theatre, which is a super popular theatre in Toronto, or you might think of Honest Ed's, which was a discount store started by Ed Mervish. Both of which have become super iconic buildings in Toronto and even landmarks for tourists and stuff to come visit. So let's get into talking about this dude. So I'm gonna be focusing more on Honest Ed's for this particular video, mainly because it's something that was super unique and although all of Ed Mervish's theaters are super big and super popular and also super cool, Honest Ed's was definitely more unique and more of his style than just a theater. And it really demonstrates how much of an entrepreneur that Ed Mervish was. Its name is Honest Ed's and it was established in 1948. In 1962, he bought the Royal Alexandra Theater, but we'll talk about that a little more in a second. In 1993, he and his son David opened the Princess of Wales Theater. Also, in 1982, he bought a theater in London called the Old Vic Theater and he refurbished it and returned it to its old beauty. But then in 1998, he sold it to Britain's Royal National Theater. How many employees? I couldn't find the number of employees for Honest Ed's. Maybe that has something to do with the fact that it's closed as of right now. So I'm gonna say the number of employees is zero as of a couple years ago. Mervish Productions had approximately 200 employees. So in all, I'm gonna say that anything related to Ed Mervish had employees ranging in the hundreds rather than like the tens of thousands or millions as you would find in like fast food industries and stuff like that. So where are these things located? The Ed Mervish Theater, Royal Alexandra Theater, Princess of Wales Theater, and Honest Ed's were all located in downtown Toronto. Before Honest Ed's closed its doors, it was located on the corner of Bloor and Bathurst Street. The Princess of Wales and Royal Alexandra Theater are both located on King Street still. The Ed Mervish Theater is located on Victoria Street, and the CAA Theater, formerly known as the Panasonic Theater, is located on Young Street. So description of Honest Ed's. Honest Ed's was a super unique convenience store slash discount store. It was definitely more focused towards the people who were not as wealthy in the area. And even after Ed Mervish and his family became super wealthy, they continued to have that same motive for having Honest Ed's open to allow these people to buy these cheap, cheap products, although they were still making some profit from it. Another unique thing about this store was that it was one in a million. Stores like Ikea and Max have hundreds of thousands of locations, whereas for Honest as there was only one and now it ceases to exist. Because it was one in a million, it felt more personable and overall honest. And it wasn't a super serious corporation. You can tell that the store didn't take itself seriously in a way because of a bunch of quirky posters around the shop and even outside that said like, don't just stand there, buy something. It was all super casual and that related to the consumer who felt more attached to the store. Mervish Productions, on the other hand, is the leading theater production company for Toronto. They've been bringing musicals, plays, etc, etc, to Toronto for the past 50 years. Let's talk more about Ed Mervish himself as an entrepreneur and overall person. So his education. His education is actually pretty minimal as he dropped out of high school to run his family store when his father passed away. But I did find it funny how after he became as successful as he was, he received honorary degrees from universities such as Trent University, Waterloo University, and even York University, in addition to the plethora of awards and honors he received as well. His job experience prior to becoming an entrepreneur actually consisted of a lot of retail work. As I mentioned before, he dropped out of high school when his father passed away to help run his family store. Funny enough, that family store was located on Dundas Street West, which actually only happened to be a couple blocks away from where he later opened Honest Ed's. After that, he helped his wife run a successful women's retail shop for more years before he opened Honest Ed's. So the idea, how was this idea for in this man's head. So at this point in time, manufacturers would actually determine the prices of products rather than the stores themselves. At the end of each season, the stores would send back large quantities of unsold products back to the manufacturer. So what Mervish did is he bought up all these products for very cheap prices, and then he sold them through Honest Ed's for only a fraction of the cost more. Another opportunity that Ed Mervish encountered was when he bought the Royal Alexandra Theater. By buying this theater at the time that he did, he saved it from demolition. This made many headlines as he saved one of the oldest and most iconic theaters at the time in North America. They acted on another opportunity when Ed Mervish and his son David built the Princess of Wales Theater in 1993. Thus, at the time, the Mervish family had control over two theaters in Toronto. What was new and different about what Ed Mervish did? Well, in the case of Honest Ed's, 
as I mentioned before, it was such a unique store. And the fact that the store wasn't focused on making sales as much it was focused on the consumer and focusing on that seller-consumer relationship. You could tell by how cheap the products were that Mervish wasn't in that business to make a ginormous profit for himself. He was in it for the consumer. Growing up in a less than wealthy family, I'm sure he could relate to only being able to afford cheap products. And so that's what that store was geared towards, were people like him. And what was different about the Princess of Wales Theater was that it was the first privately funded legitimate theater to come to North America in 30 years. The major benefits of Honest Ed's were less benefits for Ed Mervish himself and more for the consumer. He could have made these products that he got for cheap prices super expensive so he would make a wicked profit, but he didn't. He made these products super cheap for the consumer because that's what the store was about. And thus the store became a landmark in Toronto, not because it was this giant production and franchise. It became a landmark because it was so unique and special and valued by Torontonians. And in 1987, Ed Mervish started Mervish Productions. And the benefit of that was producing original plays and employing Canadian talent. Even the iconic sign of Honest Ed's, comprised of 23,000 light bulbs, became a tourist attraction for people to look at and take pictures beside and all of Ed Mervish's theaters have become the central point for what has become Toronto's entertainment district. When it comes to things like Honest Ed's, obviously many things have changed since it was first introduced. Honest Ed's has now been shut down for a little over a year. So although the store isn't still selling any goods or anything like that, it's still remembered as a landmark and such an iconic shop in Toronto. But as a nod to the past, David Mervish, who succeeded his father Ed Mervish, has promised to move some of the iconic Honest Ed sign to the Ed Mervish Theater. And for Mervish Productions, as of today, it is Canada's largest commercial theater production company. As for three entrepreneurial characteristics or attitude that Ed Mervish possessed, I chose opportunity seeking. He really sought out any opportunity he could possibly have. He bought the Royal Alexandra Theatre when it was close to demolition. He bought the Cannon Theatre. He bought the Panasonic Theatre. And he even built his own theatre, the Princess of Wales. In addition to finding the opportunity to make a profit off of cheap goods and selling them in his own store called Honest Ed's, he took initiatives to make things happen. He didn't just sit around and wait for someone to buy up these unwanted goods and sell them at a discounted price. He took it upon himself to make that a reality. And when he felt Toronto needed another theater, he built the Princess of Wales. And lastly, he solved problems creatively. There was a surplus of unwanted goods and he came up with a resolution to handle them. The impact that Ed Mervish had was he, one, created many jobs by building theaters, buying theaters, building his department store Honest Ed's. But the impact he had mostly is benefiting the consumer still to this day. Even though Honest Ed's is shut down, so people can't get these products products at discounted prices, people can still go to shows and stuff like that. His overall theme seems to be entertaining people, whether it's through silly signs on his department store or through shows and musicals and plays. Future prospects. As far as Honest Ed's goes, I'd assume that it's not going to be reopened anytime soon, obviously as it's demolished as of right now, but I do believe that it will still be in people's memories as such an iconic landmark, so it served its purpose. As of Mervish Productions, I expect it to continue to thrive as live theater is something you can't get anywhere else. It's something that needs to be live and something that we most likely won't see a decline in anytime soon. My battery's about to die, so I'm just gonna conclude this. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day! Hello, everybody! Whoa, there was a noise. So today. <laughs> which was a discount store started by Edmund. <laughs> which he refurbished and made super cool. That's. <laughs> Not lingo you want to use in a school project. He referred, he refurbished it, and he. Ah. <laughs> Ed was originally from the states, but he moved to Canada. Uh, hmm, that's not relevant information. <laughs> you can tell by how. Uh. Ooh, a low battery. That's a low battery. Another opportunity that Ed. There's a feather in my mouth. Gross.